Speaking of getting kicked in the side, let's talk about sidekicks in Bond movies. Specifically the ones that worked for the bad guys. For how many memorable main bad guy villains there were, there definitely is just as many, if not more, memorable sidekicks that did their bidding. Sometimes they were good, and sometimes they were sal. But I'm not gonna talk about the not good sidekicks. I'm gonna talk about the not, not bad sidekicks. Same rules as before, at least one villain from each era of Bond, so let's go already! Stamper. Other than sounding like he works for the Postal Service, he is notable because, well, he did a good job being a psychotic sadomasochist. Of the sidekick henchmen in the Bondiverse, he is given quite a lot of implied backstory. Early in the movie, there's a Dr. Kill kind of guy. You know, the 4K guy from Night Shift. Oh yeah, not very many people have seen that. Um, uh, that, that ghost guy from Ghost. Yeah, yeah. Well, Stamper was his apprentice in learning how to be a miserable asshole super henchman. Neat. But what sets him apart, I think, is his expressions. Most of the time, Stamper has these really big emotive faces that really make him memorable, in my opinion. Well worth the number 10 slot. Teehee. Really? That's his name? I honestly never realized that was his name until I watched Live and Let Die with subtitles. In any case, this guy is Kananga's right-hand man. Except his isn't because his right hand has been bitten off by an alligator and then replaced by a mechanical claw. If that's not cool enough for you, he can articulate the claw to crush or snip things. That's like both Zoidberg and Clamps all in one. How can you lose? He's also big and intimidating. He also doesn't really see Bond as a serious threat, which all in all leads to his downfall. But at least he's able to laugh about it, right? Right? I'm walking on gators, whoa, whoa. Hinks, I mean Drax. I mean Dave Bautista, I mean Hinks. In the rebooted Bond movies, I didn't really recall too many memorable sidekick henchmen, except Hinks. Hinks hit all of the marks that I look for in a henchman for this list. He's big and intimidating, check and check, and then he goes above and beyond and becomes downright menacing and terrifying. I mean, seriously, the first scene he's in, he pulls a mountain from Game of Thrones and crushes a guy with his bare hands. Then throughout the rest of the movie, he's tracking Bond like a predator to an Arnold Schwarzenegger. Serious stuff. Enjoyable through and through. Love it. Shoot. Red Grant. Uh, Donald Red Grant. Grant Grant Donald Red Red. I swear, if I didn't have subtitles on, I still wouldn't know most of these character names. Anyway, Red is on this list because he's, well... Hinks before Hinks was a thing, really. When Red isn't busy being a shark hunter, yes, he's played by none other than Robert Shaw, he's busy chasing around Bond and trying to get that damn decoder thingy. To be fair, he's really not so much a sidekick as he is a fully autonomous agent himself, but he is hired by Spectre, so... He done did a good in this role and he was essentially the first major real fighty bad guy in the Bond series. Doctor No, not so much, but this... Yeah, fighty fighty goody goodness. Mayday. When I was drafting this list, I had almost omitted her. Then I remembered her. And she does a fantastic job as a Bond hench, uh, person. But she does it all! Fighting, escaping, assassinating, stealing, naked timing... Wait, what? Oh, oh... In any case, she was striking enough to even be a playable character in GoldenEye. Neat. Except she became notorious because when she gets shot enough, it looks like she's not wearing clothes anymore. Neat. So why did I nearly omit her? Well, despite being an overall kick-ass character who actually ends up sacrificing herself to save the day, I think it's partially because she is so overshadowed by Christopher Walken. That's really the only thing I could think of. If she was in any other Bond movie, she might have gotten more notoriety. But still, I like her, and hence, number six. Mr. Kid and Mr. Wint. Think it's cheating because it's two of them? Well, maybe, but they are never apart from each other because 
they are a couple. Obviously, you can't just break up a couple for the sake of a list. It's true love, got to be. Seriously, these two are a duo of murderous lovers, probably. Actually, they never explicitly say they are a couple, but they have all the chemistry of a gay couple who murders people. I don't know if it's explained in the book. <laughs> because I never learned to read! <laughs> In any case, the fact they are a duo completely complements their henching ability. They are methodical, exacting, and menacing. Even if they do look like Janie Heineman with a bad wig and worm tongue as a game show host. And they even have quips for every time they kill someone. Overall, a delight. Odd job, arguably one of the most, if not the most, iconic Bond henchmen ever. Who can forget his fancy hat weapon, or his brute strength, or the fact that his parody version in Austin Powers was a murderer, kidnapper, and rapist? Fun! Nevertheless, Odd Job is on this list because he has a major presence, and that's impressive considering his only lines are growls and. Ah uh ah! -huh. He doesn't take crap from anyone, and even Bond can hardly deal with him. Hardly anything needs to be said about Oddjob. He was perfectly acted and perfectly timed. Also, I don't think he's that OP in Goldeneye. Get over it! Dario. Who the hell is Dario? Oh yeah, he's that guy with the creepy smile all the time and license to kill. He's so badass that he even gives that psycho grin when he has a shotgun rammed right into his junk. And then we get to see what kind of damage that gun does to a wall. Madness. He's on this list because he's deranged and again, rather badass. To be fair, he doesn't have all that much screen time, but when he's on screen, your eyes usually go straight to him. Near the end of the movie, he screws up Bond's plan to infiltrate Sanchez's drug operation by simply recognizing Bond. And he does it subtly as well. No, oi, that's Bond nonsense. But in the end, he gets Templar doomed into a cocaine crusher. Nice death. Jaws. Now we're getting serious, even though he's not all that serious. Definitely one of the most comedic henchmen in the Bondiverse. The only henchman, at least in the classic sense, to be in more than one movie, which was super exciting at the time. Nowadays, like, oh wow, a character is still alive. Woo, hoopity, woo, hoo. Anyway, Jaws is called Jaws because he has metal teeth that could bite things apart, like heavy steel cables, chains, and people. Lovely. He's mostly silent like Oddjob, which adds to his mystique, but unlike Oddjob, he even gets a whole character arc. In Moonraker, we get to see him fall in love and even survives re-entering the atmosphere from the crashing space station. In fact, one of his tropes is surviving things that would normally kill people, like falling out of planes, car crashes, shark attacks, collapsing ruins, being crushed by a gondola, that sort of thing. All to top it off, he just brushes himself off and looks annoyed about it. And I like to think that after he settled down from the Bond films, he got his teeth fixed, he started his own construction company, and had a family. And his only adversary after that was a hockey player named Happy, who ended up shooting him in the head with a nail gun. Ouch. Xenia on a top. Okay, okay, I have to admit, this is a pick partially chosen because of nostalgia. GoldenEye was the first Bond film I ever watched, so Xenia Onatop is really my first impression of the henching sidekick, and thusly, most of my standards are based on her. Weird double entendre name? Check. Psychotic murdering? Check. Plenty of screen presence? Check. Good looking? Double check. Just like 006, she seems to be shadowing Bond point for point but slightly less because plot. I mean, just look at how she does things. She kills people with sex, and she even has quips, and later she even becomes the phoenix, but that's neither here nor there, really. In all honesty, watching her performance is unsettling and uncomfortable, especially when you realize she's a sadomasochist. Yeah. Shut up, Bon. Weird. And that's it. But if you don't like it, you know what you can do, right? You can just comment, and subscribe, and like, and get your friends to like, comment, and subscribe, and get them to get their friends to like, and comment, and subscribe. And then before you know it, 
they can get their friends to like and comment. And